Hello and welcome to episode 40 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is February 17th, 2020. Today I'm wearing um, a very special shawl. Um, I'll have to get up and let you see. Um, as you can see, I've used different yarns to knit it. Um, and the pattern is called Manta Ray Scarf by Scott Timothy. And I was um, able to test knit the design before it was published. And I really enjoyed doing that. And his designs are very special and very different. I've since test knit another shawl, which is equally as beautiful. Um, so Manta Ray Scarf is um, called Manta Ray because it kind of looks like like a Monterey. <laughs> um, yeah, and it has this very unique shape to it. And um, you use, I think it was different, seven different colors that you can use. So I use different Opal sock yarn colors, um, but they're all some sort of gray. So I started with a light gray with some color in it, and then these different greys and then there was another skein that was only grey, then a darker grey with bright colours in it. Those two were from the same series of opal yarns and then the end is just a very dark grey. Yeah, so Manta Ray Scarf, it's um, really something different and something special and I really like it a lot. And the jacket I'm wearing is called, the pattern is called Hitofude. It's a Japanese word and it's a, also a very unique construction. And um, with the black yarn, the lace uh, pattern is not really easy to see. But um, I put on a light top so it's a bit more visible. If I wear it on top of a black top, <laughs> you can't really see anything at all but I called it my concert jacket. So um, I do like to wear it with something black underneath when we have to wear black clothes during a concert. But the, the special thing about this, um, the construction of this jacket is the, um, that you can knit it with one piece of yarn. So if you have like either a very big ball of yarn or a yarn on a cone, um, you don't have to cut the yarn for the whole jacket, you can just start and stop you have two ends to weave in the beginning and the end which is quite special and the japanese word hitofude means um one pencil stroke so if you draw or write something with one stroke without lifting the pencil then um not pencil brush brush stroke so um and that's why she called it that because um, you can do it in one go and, and the way that's achieved is um, difficult to show. I'll talk about that a bit later. You'll find out later why I am wearing this jacket today. And then I'll explain a little more about the construction. So that's what I'm wearing today. Two very unique designs. And um, that also go together well because of the black and greys. Then on to my finished objects. I have two finished objects today, but they're rather small. I have finished two of the hats or the two hats I was knitting. And um, the first one is this two color brioche hat that I knitted. And um, I started knitting from a book um, to get the numbers and to get the construction of the, uh, of the cable. But for the crown, I made up, had, I had my own idea. So this is my own design, how I finished the hat. Um, yeah, and I placed the, um, the cables at different intervals. That's different um, to, to the hat in the book. And the two colors is also different. So what I did, if you have a look at this, you can only see the colorful yarn now. That's um, a DK weight sock yarn by Opal. And the second color I was using is a gray merino yarn by Hansa Farm. And now if you look at the top of the hat from this side, you can only see the gray. 
and both sides show stockinette stitch and both sides can be worn as the outside. So I'm really happy that this worked out that way. And um, it's almost a bit too big, so it's, it's quite roomy. I can put my hair inside if I want to, or it could fit a bigger hat than mine, but it's really soft and um, it's really nice to wear. And, um, and what I did is I, I uh, knit, I did double knitting. Um, so double knitting is, is um, the technique where you knit with two colors and one color shows on one side and the other color shows on the other side. And um, because of the way you knit the stitches, you get stockinette stitch on both sides and both sides are equally as nice and would show the same pattern if you put a pattern in there. But um, I thought I don't need a pattern there. I already had the pattern with the brioche. And um, yeah, so I'm very happy with how that turned out. And I really like this hat. The other hat I was knitting was, um, was uh, a feral pattern. It was this little hat. And I started knitting it because I was um, testing the new needles by Neko. Um, the Neko Flex needles um, that are being, um, it's a second generation of Neko Flex needles and they work a bit different than the old ones. They, um, they're a lot more smooth, so the stitches glide a lot easier. Um, and now they have different sizes, so I use the, the longer needles um, to knit the hat with. And um, yeah, and the hat turned out really small, so it's like a baby hat or a small child's hat and um, it knit up really quickly but um, yeah it was nice testing the needles I um, got used to using them after a while the beginning was a bit difficult and um, I realized later that the new needles are a little less flexible than the old ones so I did like the flexibility of the old needles but because it's more important that the stitches slide um, I think it's okay that they are a little less flexible, but that's why it took more time, right? Why I needed more time to get used to handling them. But after a while, I really got used to them and you only have to change needles twice in a row instead of four times, that was good. Especially with the color work, I really appreciated that. And, um, and the good thing is you can use them up to the very end. Um, whereas if you use small circular needles at some point when you decrease you have to switch to double pointed needles so it's quite nice to to be using those um nickel needles yep so little baby head hat not head um on to works in progress and i have quite a few works in progress to show you because for some reason or another i started quite a lot of new projects uh, during the last week um, but let me show you. I'll start off with all the socks I'm knitting at the moment. Um, I'll start with the stocking I showed you last week. This is the first one that I had knit and I'm using um, Glitter Yarn by Opal and the beginning was done with two threads of this yarn held doubled and now I'm doubling those two and I've continued knitting and I have finished the um, decreases. So now I can um, knit straight down to the heel and for the heel I will double this yarn and then for the foot I will hold those two again and, um, and I will probably do that until this yarn is gone because when I um, weighed my ball before I started the toe on this stocking I realized I had to, used exactly 50 grams so I'm quite sure that this will be completely gone when I'm finished with the foot and then I'll do the toe with this yarn held double. So yep this is working nicely. Then I continued knitting on the Voldacke yarn, it's this hand dyed yarn and um, I showed you last time I did the leg, I put a yarn in for the heel and then for the foot I Continued the pattern with the garter stitch grey uh, stitches and then stockinette stitch on the um, sole of the foot and I have added an orange colour toe 
and I will add an orange color heel and I will do the same with the second one and this is how far I got with the second sock. That's not too much yet but at least I've started it. So then I continued knitting on the green sock. I'm going to donate to the organization who gives green socks to women with ovarian cancer and I finished the first sock. This was also knit with the Nicoflex needles and, um, and I noticed that with these I get a very slight ladder in between the stitches where I change needles. Um, it's only on those two places because with Nico needles, um, here we go, um, you only change at two spots. And I don't think it's a problem. I'm pretty sure that after washing they will be gone and even if not it doesn't really bother me at all. Um, if you don't like it you can knit a pattern um, to make it disappear or to make it less noticeable but I don't mind and I'm pretty sure I'll show you after I wash the socks. When I finish both I will wash them and I'll show you show them to you and then I don't think uh, we'll be able to see them. And so this is the first sock and this is the second one. Did a bit on the cuff and then now I just need to keep knitting. And this is again the Nico Flex needle. And as you can see, it is flexible, but it sort of goes back to where it wants to be. And the, the first generation was a lot more flexible, so it would flop together a lot easier. <clears throat> so it makes knitting with these a little different from knitting with normal double pointed needles. But as I said, they won't fall, the stitches won't fall off and uh, but if you do want to push the stitches it really works very nicely okay so then on we go um i'll just very quickly get rid of my jacket um okay so then the next pair of socks i'm going to show you yeah last week i announced uh, i think i told you that i wanted to cast on two new socks and one of them another green pair of socks that i want to donate and that's a pattern that a german designer designed um and i think i said something wrong last week but she designed them last year for valentine's day so last year it was red socks with the hearts and uh, just but this year somebody had the idea if we knit it on green with green yarn and then um, donate them for um, the sick women then um, that you can send in a picture and you can win something which is what i plan to do if i don't forget so i have hearts all around the cuff of the sock and then um, on the foot I decided to decrease the number of uh, hearts I was knitting. Um, I thought that's quite funny. I haven't woven in the ends yet but I think that looks quite nice. And so I finished the first one and I have started the second one and um, only this bit so far. So that's that. And then I wanted to knit a sock um, for, um, for Down Syndrome International. Um, so in February, every day from, um, I think it was from the 9th to the 18th, from the 5th to the 19th, um, every day there will be one pattern for sale. And if you buy the pattern, all the money will be donated to Down Syndrome International. And I bought this pattern, which is called Rock Solid. And, um, and I bought the pattern. I've started knitting the sock. And this is a very special sock, I think. Um, the original is also knit with neon colors. And, uh, and it has this knitted eye cord going on the back of the leg. And then um, when the next color comes in, which is going to be this yellow. Um, the eye cord is going to be split in two and um, sort of frames the heel. Looks really interesting. Can't wait to show you next week. Or just go on her page and look for, or go on Ravelry and look for rock solid socks. Um, and you can find the pattern. You can um, buy it if you want to and knit them. 
So this is going to be the heel and the colors for the foot of the sock are going to be this green again that I just showed you and this blue. So this is all the five colors that I'm going to use for the sock and um, the, uh, the toe of the sock is going to be black again, um, I think. We'll see. <clears throat> And then for the second sock, I'm going to reverse the order of the colors so that I get two different socks. And then on March 21st, when uh, on Down Syndrome Day, International Down Syndrome Day or so, um, we can all wear different socks to, um, yeah, um, to show that we took part in this um, knit along. Yep, so that's that. And I think that's all the socks I'm knitting on at the moment. Yep, but I'm also knit, I also uh, knitted on the wrist warmers that are, I think, quite similar to socks because you have the same amount, the same number of stitches, and um, you can either use double points or tiny um, circular needles. That's what I'm using for these. This is the second wrist warmer and I'm using Chao Gu mini circular needles and last week I'd already finished the first one except for the thumb but I've added the thumb and I'm really happy with them um, whoops haven't woven in the ends again <laughs> but they're really nice and soft I'm using one uh, yarn is a baby alpaca and the other one is mohair with silk and they're both by Hansa Farm, a German company. Yeah, so I'm, I think I'm two rounds away from starting the thumb increase. And then the thumb increase is knitted in stockinette stitch. It's really hard to see with that color. And um, yeah, and then this bit, still quite a bit to do. Okay, then I did not work on my memories blanket. I wanted to, I already, I still have um, um, yarn from finished objects that I haven't put into the blanket yet. So I do want to keep doing that, but I didn't get, get round last week too many new projects that needed to be started. But I have crocheted on two of my projects and one of them is the cotton blanket or shawl or whatever that I'm crocheting with all the colors of Catania that I'm selling in my shop and I've added I think last time I was at the cream white and I've added the browns and the black and I'm still very very happy with how it looks and how it's growing and next week I want to add all the grays that I have and then I have to make a decision. I think after I've added the grays, I will probably wash and block it and see how big it is. And then I can make a decision whether to add some glitter yarn or whether to add um, the multicolor yarn that I got over there. Um, yeah, but I'll decide that after I've washed and blocked it and um, I can see how big it is. So this is one of my crochet projects. And the other one is the Carnaby Crochet Along by um, Simply Crochet Magazine. And last week I showed you the first piece that I crocheted. And there's one piece in every issue. So um, that was the January issue. They started the Crochet Along. And then the February issue that came out last week. Um, the instructions were there for this bit but you can crochet it twice so you need two pieces to, to um, make the pullover and if you do the blanket you need to crochet four of these so um, basically those two are as wide as this one and um, and one fourth so you need four of these to get the whole length but this pattern only has those two and now um, I must wait. I can't go on crocheting until the next issue um, is published. 
keep forgetting that word um, and that will be in March so this will have to wait then what else did I work on I worked on my Raglano pullover that's the knit along that we're doing in my with my channel and my um, Ravelry group and I'm knitting a pullover top down with um, DK weight sock yarn by Opal um, this beautiful blue and last week I'd already started knitting the sleeve and now I've finished the decreases and I've started knitting a pattern um, I was kind of getting bored just to knit stockinette all the time and I decided I wanted to have a pattern for the lower half of the arms and also um, for the front and back and the pattern is from um, the Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible, I think it's called. I'll show you next week, I forgot to bring it. Um, and this is the pattern I chose. And it's sort of a bit like a feather and fan stitch, but not exactly. The garter ribs are um, sort of... Um, not all the stitches on it in garter, just some of them but you have some holes and some decreases and I think it looks quite nice. Um, yeah, so I will stick with the pattern and I'll have to add a few more repeats until the sleeve is long enough. And once I finish that sleeve, I'll, finish this. I'll do the second sleeve and then I'll continue with the front and back. Yeah, so that was quite exciting to try the new pattern but I really like it then I continued knitting on my kangaroos that's the Stephen West trousers I'm knitting that goes with the pullover that I knit last year and um, and I have finished knitting the front of the trousers so this is this is the top of the trousers and these are the two legs they're both the same length now. I haven't got round to putting the stitches on a piece of yarn because um, um, there will be, I think they will be finished with an eye cord. But um, before, oh, there's quite a, a few steps still to do. So I have to knit another piece um, where I will use different colors. I will use the same colors that I used for the pullover. <clears throat> And then when I have the second piece, I will attach a waistband. And then after that, there'll be a, a bl dark blue band connecting the front and the back on both sides. And also between the legs, there will be this blue bit that is knit back and forth and attaches the two pieces. I'll show you when I get there. <clears throat> so that's the trousers. And then the two new socks that I started last week. I'd already talked about last week, so I had planned to start something new. But there was also something else that I had planned to do, but I forgot to tell you about. And that's the No Mystery Knit Along by Sarah Shearer. This is the third mystery gnome that she designed, and I have knitted the other two as well. And um, so when she announced there would be another gnome, I uh, instantly bought the pattern and looked for yarn and waited for the clues to come and they started coming out last week and there was a new clue today that I haven't been able to do yet but um, I picked the following yarns <clears throat> this is another hand dyed yarn by Voldacke um, I forgot the color name I'll put it in my on my Ravelry page so you can have a look there um, yeah, and also Voldacke yarn, that's um, Aquaman. This is left over from a cowl that I knit. And, um, and as a solid color, I chose this color by Opal. <coughs> because I knew beforehand that there would be color work involved. So it was important to have something with a big contrast. So I thought these colors do have a nice contrast. And then the third color, she said you could pick anything that goes with the other two. And I thought this is a nice combination. And if anybody wants to knit the gnome and 
still be surprised by it and doesn't want to know what it looks like, then you have to look away now because now I'm going to show it. This is how my little gnome hat looks so far. It started off with these little, I won't mention what they are, just in case some people don't want to know yet. And then this really nice and interesting color work. And um, there'll be some more of that with the clue that came today. So um, I'll be able to show you next week. Okay, I took it out of the picture. Anybody who looked away can look again now. <laughs> <laughs> so this was something um, new that I had to start last week because the glue started coming out. And then I started another project that I hadn't really planned on starting, but um, there's a knit along um, in Germany that started last week for the Stofude, for the jacket that I just showed you at the beginning of the episode. And um, Several of my friends are knitting along and my sister is knitting along and so I decided I'll, I'll knit along too. And um, let me just show you what the jacket looks like again if you're not wearing it. Um, oh, it's really impossible to see anything black on, um, on camera. Okay, I can't show you. The thing is that um, with that jacket you start with a provisional cast on but not just with one, but with two. And the reason is you start with the sleeve and the back and the sleeve, and then you knit until it's long enough to go around your arm. And then you undo the provisional cast on and you knit your stitches together to finish the sleeve. And then you pick up the other stitches and then you do the same with the other sleeve. And because you have to do one sleeve and then go to the other side and then do the other sleeve. That's why you need two um, provisional cast-ons, which is a bit confusing, but the instructions are really well written. So if you just follow what they say, it's not too hard to do. The pattern, um, no, let me start with the yarn. The yarn I'm using is a German hand dyer called Wollmeiser, and I'm using her lace yarn. And this is a 300 gram ball. And I plan to knit the whole jacket with this one ball of yarn and um, which is just the right thing to do if you have instructions like that that you can knit in one go you should have a big ball of yarn I didn't with the other one but that's why I want to do it better this time so I knit a gauge swatch which, which is quite important with this jacket because um, the number of stitches that you cast on determines how long your sleeves are going to be um, yeah and this is my gauge swatch. This is the lace pattern that's in the jacket. It's quite straightforward, nothing very complicated, but nice and effectful. I think it's the wrong way around. Doesn't matter. And I started doing the cast on, but I haven't finished it yet. And I thought I'll still show you because um, when I did the other jacket, what I did is I, um, crocheted a long chain and then I picked up the stitches from that and it works but it's not so easy and sometimes it's a bit difficult to go through the right loop and um, now, since then I've learned to do a crochet on cast on where you crochet the stitches onto your needle so the light blue stitches I made with a crochet hook I crocheted them onto the needle and then I knit them with a proper yarn so I can undo this light blue yarn later on and uh, to finish my sleeves and if you look you can see that here it's a little gap so um, let me just make sure I'm not losing any stitches so this is the first bit of um, provis provisional cast on that I did and I knit the stitches and I knit the I knit them again and now I'm knitting these stitches and then when I go back then um, that's when I can start the pattern and um, so they are offset by one row but that's going to happen again when I finish the sleeve so then they'll be the same it's a very 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 clever construction it's not a not expensive the instructions not very ins uh, the pattern is not very uh, expensive so if that sounds interesting to you, if you like the way the jacket looked, 
um, yeah, then go ahead and you could join the knit along. So that is almost the last thing I wanted to show you. There's one more project that I um, not really started doing, but it's more a continuation. Um, I'm not sure I've mentioned it on one of the English episodes yet, but my sister and I sometimes knit things together. Sometimes when we knit for our little nieces, um, I will do one part and she will do another part. And sometimes if things are too boring for me, she will knit something for me. And in return, if something is too complicated for her or if she doesn't want to sew things, then I will do that for her. And uh, my sister is a really big fan of the Viajante by Martina Beam. It's one of her, I think, most popular patterns that she's ever written. And my sister has knit probably almost a dozen of those. And I have knit two Viajante and I really like them, but they are a lot of work and um, I wasn't too keen on doing another one. But just for, for those of you who don't know what a Viajante is, it's like a very long, shallow, triangular, shawl but the trick is that you knit in the round which means it's it's a double layer and you can actually wear it like a poncho poncho so right now it's i can't really put it on because the needle isn't long enough but um, if if i cast it off i could put it on and then i could wear this bit like a like a little um cowl and then the rest would be like a poncho and um, my sister knit one like this for herself and she used two yarns one is a um, lace yarn by a company that used to be called drachenwolle um, they're now called herzfaser and one yarn is uh, mohair silk by hansa farm the same yarn that i'm using for the um, for the wrist warmers and she held them double and hers is in pink tones with light gray and I wanted to have it with the blues and the white and I think the color combination is just so beautiful and it's so soft and it's so warm and um, but the thing is my sister doesn't mind knitting the whole big thing as long as it's just stockinette stitch and just knit stitches it's no problem and the pattern says for the edge that you do a um, that you do a very simple lace pattern. I did that for my first Viajante, but for the second one, I changed it and used a different um, lace pattern. And for this one, I wanted yet another lace pattern because I don't like to repeat things in knitting too much. So I wanted to use a different pattern. And, um, and also I've um, put beads in both my Viajante um, edges. And I wanted to have beads in this one and my sister isn't too keen on putting beads in her knitting. She's done it, but it's, it is a bit of work and she wasn't keen on doing it and she's already knit the whole big thing. So I said, I'll do the edge myself. And that's why I have, I have another new project on the go. And these are the beads I'm using. They have a, they're not, not round and straight. Um, as usual, but they're a bit elongated, and um, and this is what it looks like. Well, it's really difficult to see, but um, I'm doing a kind of like little squares, and in the corners I'm putting these beads. Oh, it's really difficult to see, but uh, I think it looks really, really pretty. I'm planning on doing three. Um, rows of beads so not too much of an edge I don't have that much yarn left and I have I think 300 stitches <laughs> so I think three pattern repeats should be enough and um, yeah can't wait to finish that and wear this so this is everything I knit and crocheted on last week and I hope you enjoyed watching me and hearing about everything and I'll see you in the next one bye